an adventurer who weathered the elements out on the ocean. A Lithuanian man rode across the Atlantic from Spain all the way to South Florida. It's an incredible feat, and joining us now to talk about his five thousand mile journey we have travel vlogger Aurumas joining us now i want to say your last name but i am not going to do it justice and i'm sure it's more beautiful than how i'm pronouncing can you say it for me <laughs> well we have it just oh uh, yep see much much more beautiful than i had your story is such an inspiration the fact that you did this all by yourself i gotta ask where the inspiration even came for to row across the atlantic all alone well, I guess I just want to, like, uh, uh, change, I mean, not change myself, but uh, make some challenges on myself and to see how my physically and uh, phys uh, psychologically I um, can be, I mean, prepared for that or, or I didn't. So, yeah, the preparation was for two years uh, for this role because it's only that role were made it only by two guys. So. I'm the third guy on the planet who rode from the mainland to mainland. That is, is incredible. As you had said, setting those challenges, see if you can overcome it, and you did. Mm -hmm. And then you look at the videos. You're just showing them. And the weather that you have to encounter. Talk about some of those storms and, and what it was like there out in the open ocean. Yeah, the storms, I had a few of them. Also had, like, a totally calm ocean totally calm sea so it depends what you see on the video yeah it's like around three meters three and a half meters so it's like 14 feet uh, waves my maximum had what i had uh, four, 16 feet waves but uh, it's doable with this boat it's doable of course it's not sometimes easy it's like starting becoming uh, te uh, technical rowing not basically rowing in the river or lake, but you like you have to like follow the waves, see the streams, uh, and all that stuff. So yeah, it's challenge not only like physically, but you have a lot of knowledge, uh, direction, uh, uh, and how you can manage to do this road. I was going to ask you about the waves because they can be massive when you're out in the middle of the Atlantic. I also want to ask you though, as you said, within all the storms outside of that, you had some quiet weather. What was it like to be out in the middle of the Atlantic by yourself in the middle of the night with nothing but stars and moonlight? I imagine quite magical. Yeah, that's magical and very romantic, but at the same time, it's very exhausted because you have, don't have any wind help. So we have like uh, push ourselves and do rowing with like seven, eight hundred uh, kilograms rowing boats uh, without any help from the from the wind so i was more appreciated when the like uh, 20 knots are like blowing <laughs> to the west and it's much more easier to row but not all the times like that but uh, the stars is romantic but i guess more strange feeling when you open the hatch and getting out from the boat and you're just hearing the uh, big wind noise and the waves but you cannot see anything so it's a strange feeling yeah there's so many questions come to mind with this when you're thinking about it yes. and and so i'm thinking how how many hours a day are you rowing is it a constant threat constant and then are you sleeping and when you do wake up mm -hmm. how do you know where you're at you're out in the middle of this ocean and you kind of use mm -hmm. the stars to navigate yourself so are you doing that at night there's so many questions so like Again, how, how often are you rowing a day? And then how do you sleep and go to the bathroom and all that? <laughs> so the routine is basically very simple. You're rowing around 12, 14 hours per day because I wanted to beat the world record, which is right now 111 days and 12 hours by Jack Jarvis. He's his England guy. And my goal was to do it faster. So I counted like that I have to row like around 12, 14 hours if the conditions let me do that uh, second thing uh, the sleeping the resting time is of course inside in the in the boat the thing is that when you close the hatch it's totally sealed and if some big waves smash the boat and if capsized it will capsize back to the right position and you will be dry inside so the main goal was to all the time uh, close the hatch totally fully <laughs> yeah. and uh, don't don't mess with those uh, mistakes because 
Small yeah. mistakes could like make you uh, dramatically changes in your trip. If you like open the will be open with the hatch and you will get big wave in the inside your cabin, you will lose electronic because salt water is killing everything. So it was like uh, step by step and to have that routine when you're wow. sleeping, when you're rowing. And my total average was yeah, 12 hours per day rowing and eating four times per day, plus all snacks is on the top and so on. So I was collecting around 4,000 calories. It's not, it's not so much as I wanted, but I just feel that I cannot put more in my stomach. <laughs> and I lose around seven kilograms uh, during this uh, trip. Well, you did an amazing thing. And before I leave you, I am curious, after accomplishing such an incredible thing, what's next? What, what do you have your sights on? Uh, well, this is my 10th trip. So before that, I, I already made nine trips by kayak, by bicycle in Europe, in, the, in Africa, in, in Indonesia. But right now after Atlantic, I think uh, I'm starting missing bicycle. So we will see. We'll see, but at least it will be like four, maybe five, maybe six months of cycling. Huh? But I'm really a big lover of kayak. And I know you have uh, Missouri River, which is the longest river in the United States. So we will see what's coming next. That is amazing. Yeah. All facets. And, and it's just incredible because I would think, all right, rowing would be your specialty. You're like, no, I'll do cycling mm -hmm. as well. Truly an incredible story. Thank you, Aurumas, Thank you so for much. joining us. Best of luck. We'll be watching.